Hi, I'm Rich Zeiger, and you're listening to Something Real, connecting the reality of God to the realities of life. Our regular host, Stacey Blasky, is still on a break, but she'll be back soon. In this episode, we continue our journey through the book of Luke, and we find Jesus bringing some pretty radical teaching to his followers. In today's passage, Luke 6, verses 27 to 38, Jesus stands firmly on the foundation of reality that he lays in verses 20 to 26. He begins to flesh out what relationships, attitudes, and resulting behaviors look like when a Christ follower has thoughts that are aligned with what is real instead of what just seems real. When I begin to view reality as God views reality, it affects how I see my circumstances, to be sure, but it also affects how I see others, how I see myself, and how I see God's Word. Loving and showing grace to others becomes a logical extension of my relationship to God and my union with Christ, rather than a list of commands to follow. After establishing that real life is more than the circumstances of this life, our Lord, in verse 27, jumps right into, But I say to you who hear, love your enemies, do good to those who hate you, bless those who curse you, and pray for those who spitefully use you. He presses the point further, even commanding the same attitude when we find ourselves physically abused or taken advantage of. He advocates not merely lending without interest, but lending without repayment. Verse 31 encapsulates this teaching in what we know as the golden rule. Jesus goes on in verses 32 to 36 to expound the reason behind the teaching. It's important as we look at the why of this love your enemies and turn the other cheek stuff to keep in mind the foundation of the greater reality mentioned earlier, as well as the nature of his audience. As he delivers this teaching, Jesus is mainly addressing his disciples, so the teaching is for them. However, Luke tells us that there are many others there who are seeking healing and uh, they're there to hear this great teacher They weren't his followers, or at least not yet, but this crowd was what we might call seekers today. They didn't really know yet what they were hearing and seeing, and they didn't really even know what they were seeking, just that they were seeking something, maybe a show or a healing, or the same uh, thing that they'd heard about in other towns, some kind of a better life. Jesus is describing the blessed life of a believer who is becoming more like the Master. Or, as he said in verse 35, sons of the Most High. The Lord is not saying that these behaviors make us children of God, but that this is what a child of God looks like. He or she bears a resemblance to Daddy. The character of the Father is reflected in the character of the child. Now, it's significant that no part of what Jesus is describing, no part of what he's commanding here, is natural. It's reckless and irrational from a human perspective. What Jesus is talking about is no mere natural justice or law of decency. He's calling those who follow him into the God life to something bigger, something supernatural. But the supernatural love that he describes is not mystical or theoretical. It's not less real, but rather more real than the natural love that fits within our human understanding. This reckless, irrational love is not careless, nor is it illogical in reality, but it's only by embracing the greater supernatural reality, the reality beyond what is natural in this flesh, that we can make sense of it. Christ followers love their enemies and do good to those who mistreat them, specifically because they view reality through the divine lens, the lens of the eternal. Therefore, the treatment they receive in this life is of little consequence compared to the glory that is coming, as Paul relates in Romans 8.18. Their primary focus is to reflect the Master. We love because God loves. We forgive the unforgivable because God, through Christ, has forgiven the unforgivable in us. Jesus is telling us that the blessed life, real life, is not found in our understanding of justice, but in reflecting God's merciful, supernatural love through our relationships. I hope you'll join us back here on Thursday for a deeper discussion of this topic. 
And in the meantime, I hope our time together has given you something to think about. Thanks for listening. You can check out our shows on Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Sundays, and on pretty much any podcast platform you'd like, including YouTube. So be sure to join us three times a week. We look forward to it.